You probably thought to yourself, I know what gate I want, I just don't know what it's called so that I can tell my fence contractor what to install for me. And today I'm gonna to talk about the different types of gates, especially rolling gates, so that when you go to install a gate at your place, you know what to tell your fence contractor so that you get what you want and you know the shortcomings of each different style. So this gate right here is probably the most common gate that you'll see. I've heard people call it a door because it looks somewhat like a door and acts like a door. We often call it a single gate because it is a single leaf. It could be a walk gate, a man gate. Now this one actually has some special hardware so that it will auto close and it has a panic bar on it so that we can get out of it. That way it always stays locked. And if you wanna see how we install this panic bar and the self-closing hinges, you can check this video out right over here. This is a walk gate. So this is just on the south end of our yard here in Powell, and this is what we call a double drive gate or a double swing gate. And it is denoted by the bar in the middle to latch the two together, meaning that we have two gate leaves. So it's double gate leaves, and that allows you more flexibility and more width. So the single gate is the cheapest. This would probably be a little bit more expensive. Some of the drawbacks to double gates are especially in high snow areas. You can get a lot of snow and it gets hard to open them. If you have a lot of terrain where you need to go down slopes and stuff, you can get pretty big gaps underneath of them because you are trying to clear a very large area the wider the gate is. So uh, they do need a lot of room either on the inside of the fence or the outside of the fence to be able to swing. And so sometimes limiting factors for sites can determine that maybe this isn't the best gate for your particular application. One of the cheaper options, but also has its limitations because it does require a wide swing area. In the middle of them, you'll have a drop rod or you can have a strong arm latch, which isn't quite as nice. We typically use drop rods and that locks into either a pipe or some sort of stop in the ground to keep you from being able to push it open easily. And it's held in place by drop rod guides. You need three guides, top, middle, and bottom to run the drop rod. And then the middle one uses this drop rod fork. And typically you can get the individual components or you can buy a whole kit with everything. This would be a drop rod, industrial drop rod assembly with the guides, the fork, and the piece of pipe. The finishing touch is the little cap on the top. This is a rolling gate, denoted by the two wheels on the front of the gate touching the ground. This is wildly disappointing. A lot of people will get these confused with a cantilever gate, which I will show you next, but these are not the same thing. In my personal opinion, these are my opinions only and do not reflect the gate industry as a whole. This is the most undesirable gate in the fence industry. I cannot stand rolling gates. I hate rolling gates. They're just terrible. One of the reasons that I hate rolling gates is because they have the wheels on the ground and they don't always track right, so you're having to lift it up and move it over when you get it to the latch post to get it latched. They can be very heavy and very hard to move and just not a great gate, especially if you're ever considering automation. I would never, ever in a million years automate a rolling gate. Over my dead body. There's no way to make sure that it contacts the latch post at the same place every time without somebody assisting it. This is a gate. Is it a great gate? No, it is not. I would put a swing gate at my place before I installed a rolling gate. So to install a rolling gate, you'll need the rear wheels with the bracket. So you'll need this special bracket. Make sure you specify some of these you can get just with the wheel only. Then you'll need the pipe track brackets is what this is called. This is a four inch pipe track bracket, but back here we have a two and three eighths pipe track bracket. Also available in two and seven eighths and inch and seven eighths. So lots of different sizes for hardware depending on what post you have. And then at the very ends, you'll need some sort of a safety stop. You can see this one's got some welded safety stops to keep that gate from just rolling right off the tracks and then falling over and killing somebody, which is never good. So that's pretty much all the hardware you need. And then at the other end, you need some sort of a rollo latch. There's a rollo latch, it just slides up and down. And usually there's a couple brace bands here that have the other piece. Um, and then this slides into it and you can lock it down here once it's sitting in the cup. And then the wheels, these wheels are probably undersized for this particular gate. They make several different types of wheels, six inch, eight inch, uh, some big pneumatic wheels. So the heavier and bigger your gate is, definitely spend a little bit extra money on your wheels. May not be a very popular opinion, but these are a terrible gate. And you can see these people have stopped using this gate because it's a whole, this is probably 20 or 25 or 30 feet long and it was just a heavy gate and tough to use. And they finally just said heck with it and stopped using it. And you will need to have more slide room on the rear of the gate than the width of the opening. So if you have a 25 foot opening, you might need to have 27 feet of slide area because we do need to have enough gate to hook these wheels onto. And that's one of the big drawbacks, probably the worst, worst gate that you can put in ever. I hate them. I, I just, I hate these gates. I hate them. I hate them so much. I hate them. Just hate them. I hate them, Gregory. I hate them all.
so people still use them. They're big in Florida in the warmer climates. And the snow, you trying to talk about operating one of these in the snow, forget about it. Right here is what I would call my second favorite gate for manual operation. Okay, well, maybe it's my third. So my favorite gate, I'll tell you at the end, but this is, this is right up there. Probably my third favorite gate is this gate here, and this is a cantilever gate. You can tell it's a cantilever gate because there are no wheels down here. There are no wheels that roll along the ground to help this stay in its track. Now that's important in places where they have lots of snow and wind and different variables. There are some drawbacks to that though. And the big drawback you're probably seeing right now is the fact that I'm going to have a gap right down here underneath the fence. And that gap is limited to how close I can get the rollers to the ground. Now we could have probably dropped this gate down another two, maybe three inches, but we're still gonna have a minimum of a six inch gap underneath our gate. So if that's a concern to you, maybe a rolling gate isn't the best gate for your application. However, if you can deal with a six inch gap under your fence, this gate is extremely reliable because it doesn't have any rolling hardware that touches the ground. And the reason it gets its name is because it's cantilevered over, which is why it's called a cantilever gate. A lot of people will consider this a rolling gate like the other rolling gate, and it is not. They are two very different gates that operate two very different ways. Another drawback to this gate is you can see that we covered the entire opening of the gate, and then we need another half again as much on the tail. So if we have a 20 foot gate, we need a 10 foot tail. So the overall gate is 30 feet, meaning we need 30 feet of fence to slide that gate back against. So it requires a lot of room to slide and make it properly. Things to keep in mind if you're going to do a rolling gate, make sure that you use good quality hardware. We at SWI will only use nylon gate rollers. And you can see a link down below for the gate rollers that we sell. Now with these rollers, you'll get covers, which are very important. Every gate roller should have covers to help protect people. And these bottom rollers are actually vented so that the rain and snow as it melts will drain out of them. That's important to consider, especially if you're going to put those rollers super, super close to the ground or even dig them in a little bit. You can get ice build up and that can freeze up your rollers in the winter time and make it hard to open. So really there's only two major components. You need four rollers. We would never ever put more than four rollers on a gate. So it doesn't matter how big the gate is, it's going to get four rollers, two at the front and two at the back. Anything more could cause binding. And then we're going to have a latch up front. Now this latch that we have, this is called a nesting latch and it's because it nests in here. The reason we use that is because even when it's windy, if that gate swung one way or another, it'll help guide it right into the pocket where it needs to be. And this works really well if you're gonna use an automated gate. So if you ever decide you wanna automate your gate, this is a gate that you can automate. A rolling gate is not recommended for automation. The nesting latches, again, we'll put a link down below so you know where to get these nesting latches. Do a really good job in these high wind areas like we have here in Wyoming. Make sure that gate closes right where you want it every time. Some things you might notice that we do differently on our gates is we will actually make the end verticals the same size as the top and bottom rail and then we'll extend them out and that gives us a nice safety stop. We also run a tension wire the entire length top and bottom to hog ring too so that it's harder to get this away. The last thing we do differently than everybody else is we always run our diagonals the same way for the entire gate. And that reminds me, if you're watching this video and you're thinking these diagonals are faced the right way, could we flip this gate over and still make it work? Well, I'm not so sure about that. I submit that you could, but that's a raging debate amongst the fence people. If the diagonal went this way, would it cease to work as well? My answer is no, because this is a rigid member and it should work the same either way. It's a triangle. It's a triangle and it's all solid welded rigid. So I submit that it would not. The only time I submit that it matters is if you are using a flexible rod, like a truss rod to hold that shape. And then it would absolutely matter because it will work very good in tension, but not compression. But this should work well in both directions. That's my opinion. What do you think? Drop a comment down below and tell us whether or not it matters. And if you could provide some expertise as to why See, this is one of the nice things about one of these gates is they roll so smooth, just like butter. Yeah, you wanna talk about opens easy? I bet even Dan could open one of these. All right, so the gate you see behind me, this is either going to be my second favorite or my first favorite, depending on how you wanna look at this. So this is my second favorite for automated gates, but my first favorite for manual gates. If you're only gonna have a manual gate, this, this is still a bomb-proof, great option. And this is what's considered a top track 
aluminum slide gate. So because it's made out of aluminum, it's incredibly light comparatively. The thing we like about this is the track is at the top. And because the track is at the top, that means we don't have any trash rolling around down here. And we can actually close up the gap. If you'll remember, we had a nice big gap down here for our rollers on the cantilever gate. So this style is also a cantilevered style, but we call it a slide gate top track slide gate because we have internal truck assembly that rolls inside this track right up here at the top of the fence. Instead of having four, now we have all of our weight being supported by two truck assemblies that are bolted to this post, this post and the second roller post. And then down here, all we have is guide rollers. And because these are so thin, we can actually put these a lot closer to the ground. Something I will note is that this one is missing its roller covers. They should have roller covers. So that's important for you to know if you're gonna install this safely. You can get these top track in both single or dual. So I can get a track on both sides if I have a really long, really heavy gate. If you really have huge openings, you can get these in box frame gates, meaning that instead of just having a track here and here, we actually come out wide and build this great big, huge box frame gate. And you can get incredibly large openings in a box frame gate. Now you won't find these on our website yet. So if you're interested in a gate like this, you can write us an email sales at swifence.com and we would be happy to quote you one of these gates. With this gate, you'll also get a hardware kit. The hardware kit includes the two top truck assemblies and then you'll get two bottom guide rollers along with a latch. This again has the nice nesting latch to make sure that it lines up perfectly. The thing that you'll need to keep in mind for all of these gates, whether it be a rolling cantilever or aluminum slide gate, is whether or not you're gonna slide it right or left and whether or not it's going to be on the inside of the fence or the outside of the fence. You can see here, because we had some trees and stuff here, this gate was actually installed on the outside of the fence, which can be easily done. They are not limited to just being on the inside or the secure side of the fence. And that can sometimes be a big help. Just like a cantilever gate, you can see that even though this is a 30 foot opening, we actually need almost 45 feet of fence to slide it down because we have these posts set this far apart. And even when the gates close, we still have tail all the way down here. They're incredibly reliable. They move super easy. They basically glide. As large as this gate is, even the weakest of people can open and close this gate, which means if it opens and closes that easy, it's taking that much less wear and tear on your operator to open and close your gate, which is why it's my number two favorite operated gate. Now this one has stops here at the very top and both ends of the track. It's just a pinch here that basically pinches off right here and keeps that gate from coming off the tracks. And then we have an additional safety because it's sandwiched between two posts. So if it did come off, it can't fall over and hurt somebody. So that's something always to think about with all your gates is make sure that if it comes loose of its hardware and falls, can it fall over and hurt somebody? And this one's in good shape. The brother, the sister, the cousin, whatever you want to call it to this gate, instead of being a top track, would be a bottom track. And bottom tracks have a truck assembly that bolts to a big foundation down here and the truck rides on a track that is right underneath the gate. And it again is cantilevered, but the track is on the bottom. The reason you don't see a lot of those in places like this in Wyoming is because of snow. So that's why in colder climates, you're always gonna see the top track be the most popular option but just know that bottom track is also out there and may be a viable option if you live in a warmer climate like I do in Florida. So let's show you my number one favorite automated gate now that we know what my number one favorite manual gate is. You know what that gate's called? That's called a vertical pivot. The unique factors about it are that it doesn't take a whole lot of back room to be able to install this and you can still have a very wide opening. Up to 25 feet on a single gate, which is pretty impressive. The shortcomings are that it goes straight up in the air. So if you'll notice right above us, we have power lines. Things that are up above all of a sudden are now a problem. But the nice thing is, is we don't need a whole lot of room and now we can get tall semis and wide loads right through this gate. This is actually at our yard here in Powell because it's incredibly reliable. This thing's probably been installed here for about 18 years and I can't ever remember having had it not work. This thing is bulletproof and that's why we install more of these than anything else here in Wyoming for municipalities and government entities. They're not cheap, but dang, are they good. So the winner for me, if you're going to use an automated gate is absolutely hands down tilt aways vertical pivot gate. Fewer problems with this in automation than any other gate out there. And it works so well in the snow, the ice, the wind, the cold, the heat, and all the other conditions that the environment can throw at it. So if you want the most bulletproof gate, that's a tilt away. It is an operated gate and I will warn you, they're not cheap. If you want more information about those gates and would like to quote on one of those, please let us know. You can drop an email, sales at swifence.com.
And if you want to see a vertical pivot gate get installed, check this video out right here where Dan installed a couple of these over in Cody. I'm Mark with SWI here in Powell, Wyoming. We hope you also have a really good dang day.